Hello again today. It's Veterans Day. So I would like to start out with a shout out to my veterans that are friends of mine. Shout out. Hey, veterans. Hey. Enjoying your day? I know I am. We're veterans. We rock it. We sock it. We fought for our freedoms. We enjoy our freedoms. And one of the freedoms we enjoy is electing a president. I am proud to say that I do support Donald Trump. Um, I do not support a lot of the things that are going on in our country right now. That is a cause of Donald Trump. All right. You white supremacist people that are out there painting squashicas and burning people's cars because they're African Americans. Stop that. Stop it right now. Quit being racist. We're better than that. We're supposed to be a better country than that. We're better than the... We're better than the people that are threatening to pull themselves away from the Union and are burning <coughs> pinatas that look like Donald Trump's heads. Matter of fact, those, I mean, if you're spewing any type of hatred right now, you're burning a swastika, you're burning your neighbor's car, you're threatening Muslim people, and you're threatening black people. You need to be put in jail. You need to be treated like the terroristic bully that you are and thrown in jail. And I know that's not popular. I'm probably going to lose some friends on Facebook because of it. But I'm sorry, guys. If you have that type of mentality, you, there's something messed up with you up here to where you have to hate somebody because of their skin color. Or where they're from you know uh, granted the people that are here illegally we need to get get them out we need to you know if you don't have a green card you don't have a visa you don't belong in our country you don't belong taking our jobs you don't belong you know you don't belong working you know if Mexico wants to Mexico wants to be part of the United States that badly there's probably steps they could do to petition the government to become a state and the Mexican government can give up all their authority and give their authority, pass their authority over to the U.S. and actually become a state and actually start making America more prosperous instead of leeching off of our prosperity and tearing our country down. The people that are protesting Donald Trump as president you know, you need to stick up and stay behind your leader. What you're doing is borderline terrorism and borderline unconstitutional and probably you should be put in jail or deported. If you don't like our president, leave. California is. I don't know how they're going to do it, though. I mean, that's something that's been bothering me all day, and this is why I didn't make anything a comment yesterday. I wanted to think about this a little bit. California wants to succeed from the union. So that means the United States would pull out all their military. California left the Union. The United States could sit there and say, if you are a company and you're headquartered anywhere but California, that means you can no longer operate in California. It would mean no more McDonald's out in California, no more Wendy's, no more Chick-fil-A, no more, you know, a lot of your uh, fast food and chain restaurants would have to shut down. Um, all your Starbucks that you all enjoy out in California, no more because Starbucks would not be allowed to operate in the country of California. Um, you would have to come up with your own currency. You would no longer get federal funding for your roads. Um, let's see, all the money that you paid towards your income taxes would be forfeited because frankly you know you're in another country now so um yeah you wouldn't have to file your taxes with the irs but at the same time you uh probably wouldn't get any of your money back for your tax returns that you're looking to get back to you know take a vacation or buy a car what about your uh, friends and family members that aren't in california uh, if you succeeded from the union would they be allowed to come visit um, would the United States, you know, put a wall around California and say, hey, no Californians can come over to the United States 
United States can't go over to Cal, you know, United States members can't go over to California, you know, and, you know, like they can't go to Cuba, now they won't be able to go to California. I mean, there's, there's consequences, and I don't think they, I think you all are acting irrationally right now, out of fear of Donald Trump being president, but we had a lot of the same concerns when Obama became president. I mean, look at the guy who controlled him, George Soros. Evil, vile man. And you know, and unfortunately he was the he was behind Clinton as well. And he, there's a lot of people in the United States that feel that his economic plan was to ruin our country. And we rose up and we found a candidate that couldn't be bought by another George Soros, couldn't be controlled by, by anybody, and we decided that that's what we wanted for our president. We wanted somebody that was different, that wasn't political, that wasn't tied into the system, and, and that's what we got, you know? Four years from now, we probably might be tired of Trump, too. And hopefully, hopefully the DNC can come up with a, another person like Bernie Sanders, who was supposed to be the real Democratic uh, candidate that ran against Donald Trump instead of Hillary Clinton. You know, the whole fiasco that happened in the DNC. The DNC should have got behind Bernie and said, you know what, we realize that Hillary Clinton sabotaged the election, most likely. I don't know how, why she didn't do it with Trump. She probably thought she was going to win with a landslide with Trump, so you know she didn't have to dig up as many graves to vote, to vote in, in November as she did for the primaries. Who knows? Um, who knows uh, how, you know, no one thought Trump would actually win. He did. We're ha a lot of us are happy. A lot of us are not happy. Same thing when Obama went in. When Obama lost to, to Mitt, won over Mitt Romney, it was extremely close. We didn't see us going around burning, burning pictures of Obama everywhere. Causing millions of dollars worth of property damage over 25 cities. It, it burdens my heart on one hand, but on the other hand, I want to see justice done. You know, so we can get back on track. So people can realize that this type of behavior is not kosher. You know, everybody's acting like a college, you know. Or exactly like they don't live in the United States. And I think we're we're taking a lot of our freedoms for granted and we need to be better versions of ourselves. Speaking of being better versions of yourself, I wrote a book called Be a Better You, B E A B E T T E R, the letter U, all one word. Uh, the colon sign, Secrets of Success. You can find it on Amazon or Kindle extremely cheap book and it teaches you how to become successful the mindset to become successful the mindset to get away from feeling like you're entitled just because you're breathing to a certain amount of money or a certain amount of dollars but it also it also tells you how to get the money that you feel you deserve you want to make a hundred thousand dollars you should be able to look in the in the mirror and be like hey I'm worth a hundred thousand dollars and believe it in your heart believe you're worth that you know i think too many people in this country have gotten away from believing that they're worth any more than minimum wage well the government says and mcdonald's says and kentucky fried chicken says and walmart says that we're not worth much more than minimum wage so let's get the government to raise minimum wage why don't we get to the mentality where we believe that we're worth more than what everybody is telling us that we're worth. And then go for the dollar amount that you feel that you're worth. I mean, you may have to work up to it a little bit. You may have to take an eight fifty an hour an hour job for, you know, two to three months to prove that you're worth the eight hundred dollars a week that you're asking. But get it in writing. 
You know, I'll come in, I do my job, I'm here for three months, you're going to give me $12 an hour, or $15 an hour. You know, and if, and I know a lot of us don't want the responsibility of being a manager or an assistant manager, and we shouldn't have to want that responsibility to be able to make a decent, solid living for ourselves, but we got to believe that we're worth what we're asking the government we're worth and we need to go to our employers and say hey enough is enough you know we we weren't you know go in on black friday if you work retail go in on black friday five o'clock in the morning walk into your boss and say i'm not clocking in unless you give me eleven dollars an hour twelve dollars an hour and make sure everybody else in your place of employment is on that same page so when you walk into Sears, <coughs> walmart Best Buy at 4.30 in the morning, there's a thousand shoppers outside and you're all saying, look, we're not going to work until you raise our wage to $12 an hour. Guess what? They're going to have to pay you the $12 an hour. Because if they don't, you're not going to go to work. Make sure you get it in writing, though. You know? I mean, they could fire you, but then they'd have to find a lot of replacements for it really, really quick to get people in to start buying sales and they're going to lose thousands of dollars in the process but friday is one of the biggest shopping days of the year you work retail that's the day that you go into your work make sure again make sure everybody's on the same page though you know you don't want to you know you know 30 of you going in and demanding 12 dollars an hour and 10 people holding out and they'll have no choice force your employers to pay you what you want. You work in a restaurant, wait right before you get a rush. And as you're getting a rush, just say, just have everybody get up and be like, and when your manager goes, where are you going? Be like, if you don't pay us $10 an hour if you're, or $12 an hour, we're quitting. Find somebody else to come in to meet the pizzas. Find somebody else to come in and flip, my bur flip the burgers at five o'clock on a Friday night. <laughs> you know? They couldn't scramble to get enough people in for interviews fast enough. And they couldn't scramble to get a hold of a lot of the other employees that aren't there to try to see if anybody wants to come in and cover that shift. And if all the employees in the restaurant are on the same page, they're like, look, we're not coming in. Give us 12 You know, they're asking for $12 an hour. If you want us to come in, we want 11 an hour. So, and, you know, and then they start giving everybody 11 an hour and everybody's happy. You know what I mean? You know, force their hands. Go go big or go home. You know, but we don't have to take, you know, what, you know, we don't have to wait for the government to raise minimum wage for us to get to a point where we have minimum wage. We don't have to wait for the government to stop the hatred. We can stop the hatred ourselves. You know, we can start policing ourselves. We can start being better neighbors to the people around us and being better people to the people around us. It sickens me that we're, we're not. Again, you know, the, over the month of November, as usual, like I said, I am giving, uh, for every book that's sold, I'm giving a dollar to uh, the Parkinson's Foundation, to everybody who, you know, in honor of my grandfather, John Milton Lighty, I love my grandfather, unfortunately he passed away a few years back, but I love him to death, and I want to do this in honor of his memory, again, my name is Ian, and I'm a member of the Better, Be a Better You, I'm the president of the Be a Better You Society of America, and I approve this message.